look at human body, our body is basically made up of many, many organs, and then each and every organ is made up of uh, tissues, and then all every each and every tissue is made up of cells. So this is the fundamental building block of a human body are the cells, and the cells has a genetic information in the form of a uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, which is basically a chemical. And then within this, within each and every cell, you see that uh, in this particular photograph, you see a, a typical mammalian cell with where a uh, with your DNA is specifically stained with a, a, a dye called DAPI, so that you can see the DNA within the cell nucleus as a blue in color. As you can see that all the genetic information is stored in the nucleus. And then if you much which which you if you go much deeper into the nucleus and as you try to see with the microscopic eyes, you see that DNA is fills the entire nucleus and then it, it, you, uh, and then it is not naked in the nucleus and it is always in addition to some kind of a proteins called histones and then they form some kind of chromatin and this chromatin fills the entire nucleus. And the further if you look at the early embryonic development from where the complex uh, animal structure is formed. Starts, uh, life starts with a single cell that is zygote, and the zygote by means of the uh, simple mitotic divisions, and then undergo two cells, and then four cells, and then repeatedly, and then give rise to a, a stage at which you can see that uh, there is a, a stage called blastocyst, and then blastocyst has a single layer of outer cells and the inner uh, cells, and these are the inner cells basically uh, fundamentally give rise to each and every cell of our body. So, uh, under saying that these embryonic, if you take out these particular cells from these particular uh, blastocysts and you can able to culture in vitro and then these cells are uh, referred as embryonic stem cells and these cells can be used to differentiate with any cell of uh, our interest and this can be used very, very much used for the And then, so every cell of our body has an identical genome and then if you look at the genes that are selectively active in a given cell are quite different. So this picture will tell you the number of genes that are uh, basically transcribed in a given cell type. As you can see that each and every cell type has a unique, unique gene expression pattern. In spite of the fact that all these cells are having identical genome, and at the same time if you try to look at uh, if you did compare the gene expression pattern between cells, so vast majority of the genes are very specific to every cell type. Of course, you do find a common genes between cell types. And at the same time, if even a single cell under different condition can respond differentially so that different genes are actually activated. So the, the single genome, but the differential gene expression pattern that has really interested the scientists to understand the mechanical differential gene expression that has led to the uh, understanding that the uh, gene, genetic material has a genes and the genes can be protein coding or non-protein coding and then you can see that uh, uh, at the uh, fundamental level, DNA in association with histone is formed to chromatin and then uh, genes are having the specific regulatory elements for example, promoters and then uh, uh, promoters and then enhancers and then these regular elements are required for spatio-temporal expression of genes. So, instead of having the identical genome and the spatial, I mean, selective activation of different regulatory elements are spatially and temporarily leads to the differential gene expression pattern across the cell. And then, in order to uh, in order to make a particular gene in a given cell to be active or silent, there are some kind of uh, modifications which are very important not only the sequence per se, this is called epigenetic modification. For example, uh, in the left panel you can see that all the modifications have been required for a gene to be off on the right panel you can see that all the requirements for a gene to be active. You can see that starting from the DNA methylation and then which is, which is basically more prevalent in the silent, uh, silent genes and then even there are some kind of these proteins which, uh, which basically binds to the uh, DNA, the histone group of proteins undergo some kind of modifications. These modifications are very very important because these modifications will decide whether a particular gene is going to be active or silent in given cell type. So at the other, other level of regulation, even the, uh, the status of chromatin, whether it is highly compacted or decompacted, that will decide the fate of uh, gene expression. So in having this kind of information, so how genes are basically regulated? So genes are basically regulated uh, at the various levels, when it's transcription and the post-transcription level. At the transcription level, you can find that transcription factors, DNA methylation and histone modification play a very major role decide the fate of a gene. And at the same time, at post-transcription level, microRNA, long non-coding RNA, RNA binding protein, and many other more, even the, the way the DNA is packaged in the nucleus itself will decide the fate of a particular gene. So, uh, and at the same time, see, spatial temporal expression of the genes are very, very important. Any misregulation, misappropriate expression of this particular uh, genes leads to disease. So, changes in nucleotide sequences in genes, and at the same time, mutations in regulatory genes of DNA, and at the same time, alteration of gene expression by external agents or factors such as bacteria, virus, alters the gene expression pattern, which ultimately leads to uh, dysregulation and then leads to disease.
So there, there are three, there are breakthroughs in the recent in, in this past decade. Uh, are three areas uh, of uh, research that is in uh, next generation sequencing and then induced pluripotent stem cells and then precision gene editing such uh, technology such as CRISPR Cas9 as a revolutionary the way we see at the uh, development processes in terms of development and then disease. So in the context, the next generation sequences are very fundamental in really to, uh, trying to uh, understand the, all the entire sequence information about the humans or different species and then at the same time uh, uh, even within the human being, enter, I mean, various spectrum of the genes that are being transcribed or various modifications, all the studies are now is possible at the very uh, at the systems level with the help of next generation sequencing. In fact, these NGS technologies are very much useful in basically understanding not the single gene, not the single protein, entire genome, entire transcriptome, entire proteome. These are this is the state of our understanding today with the help of next generation sequencing. In fact, Encore en Consortium. Uh, 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 consortium across hundreds of scientists across the world has put forward to discover the encyclopedia of uh, 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 various kind of cell types and its transcriptome or all the other modifications and then even transcription factor binding sites studies are evolved which basically giving rise the kind of data that is being generated to understand the development and differentiation of human beings. At the same time, other line of uh, technological breakthrough converting a, a normal somatic cell of our body into a cell which can basically uh, give rise to each and every cell of body is called induced pluripotent technology. This technology somatic cells are taken and some kind of pro program factors such as few genes like OX4, SOX2 or NANOGO, they are introduced into a particular somatic cell and then surprisingly all these cells are converted into a, a, a kind of the embryonic stem cell like cell. That means from an adult organism, we can generate the cells, all this in the laboratory and these cells can give us to each and every any cell of our body which can be used for immune medicine. And then other uh, revolutionary technology which is of our interest today, the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing strategy. So this is basically uh, is a technology for uh, 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 editing the genome, for example, precisely at a particular location of our genome of our interest. And I don't want to go through it because I already discussed with the uh, previous speakers. So this is RNA directed uh, uh, means of uh, gene edition. So by using this technology, what can be actually done with reference to our human genome? So these are potential applications uh, uh, only applications. As you can see that any if you are interested in any particular point or any point of creating some kind of mutation or change in a single base or two bases, so the internal deletion can be possible. And at the same time, you can insert or you can replace a segment of uh, uh, DNA. And at the same time, you can also not delete a large segment of DNA and we can also make rearrangements and then uh, we can also selectively activate a particular gene of interest and also we can selectively uh, suppress the activity of a particular gene and at the same time, specifically by using this technology, you can modify the epigenetic features such as histone modification specifically for a for the gene of your interest. And at the same time, this technology is also used to image a single a gene or loci or, a, or any loci of interest in a live cell to understand the dynamic behavior of a particular protein. So having this kind of uh, uh, technological applications, so what exactly can we, we, can, we can adopt these technologies in understanding the human uh, biology. So uh, uh, at, at present I am trying to uh, show, uh, show you some of the examples in the literature what people are trying to achieve but of course keeping the view of ethical, uh, ethical limits. So uh, now there are te technology, uh, there are uh, kind of, uh, uh, by, by integrating the induced pluripotent stem cells and the, that means patient derived embryonic stem cells and it can modify the genome within this embryonic stem, uh, this induced pluripotent stem cells so that those cells can be used to basically differentiate any kind of cell type so that the patient uh, uh, mutated genes can be replaced with the normal gene for any kind of potential applications in human. So, for example, I am going to give you some of the examples. So, this was a technology was used to tackle the HIV by, uh, by using this form casting. This is one of the potential applications because people have done this kind of things by using the talents and then other, other kind of gene editing strategies. So, in this kind of how to tackle HIV by using the this form casting mediated technologies. For example, donor hemopathic stem cells uh, in need to have a mutation in one of the genes that called CCR5 and then you can transplant that edited uh, hemopathic stem cells into the HIV infected patient and then engineered HSCs produce edited CC or 5 containing P cells which basically prevents any kind of further AIDS infection. This is one of the potential applications of very common dreadful diseases for the tumor. And at the same time, 
uh, uh, this technology can also can be used to treat dominant negative disorders uh, uh, such as uh, uh, dystrophic epi uh, epidermolysis bullosa. So this is basically a single gene mutation of the call uh, 7A1 gene and then uh, 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 from these patients uh, a single fibroblast can be taken and they can be converted into a stem cell like cells like induced pluripotent stem cell and then they can repair that particular gene, uh, they, they can repair their particular uh, gene and then uh, these so the induced pluripotent stem cells of repaired uh, cells can be used to generate the keratinocytes which basically produce a functional CAL7 protein. So that is the potential applications. Of course, it's not tested in humans. In laboratory, scientists are able to show that uh, the patient derived cells, induced uh, stem cells, we can repair the gene and we can grow the, the cells of our interest and then they can be potentially transplanted in a real time. Now, the same time, other example which I am going to give you is the combination of both CISPAR and then IPS technologies in gene therapy of human beta thalassemia. So, uh, of course, what are the potential applications? We know that the beta thalassemia is a, uh, is a response, is a main cause because of the mutations in one of the genes, that is a beta globin. And then, so in this particular uh, uh, paper, they could able to show that the, uh, the, uh, they could able to generate a, a patient, the patient with the beta thalassemia, fibroblasts were taken, they converted them to induced pluripotent stem cells, and then these, uh, they could able to correct the mutated gene, beta globin gene, and then they have, uh, they have they, these induced pluripotent stem cells are used to generate their hematopathic stem cells in vitro, and those cells are injected in the mind, and they could able to see that the repaired normal uh, beta globin protein is synthesized in this particular mice. Uh, 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 giving the suggestions that this kind of technology can be useful to treat their uh, dreadful genetic disorders such as beta thalassemia in humans. And another example I can give you is that uh, the, uh, this was used to genetic repair of a retinitis pigmentosa in patients derived stem cells. So this particular uh, genetic disorder is caused by mutations in uh, RPGRG and then from this particular patient the IPSs were generated and then genes were corrected and then as a proof of concept they could able to uh, uh, they, they could able to correct the particular gene uh, and then uh, but of course they did not use it for the medicine they could able to correct the trying to show the proof of concept of uh, gene editing in those patients which are suffering from retinitis pigmentosa and further there are other modifications other kind of applications which are basically uh, uh, for example manipulating genes in mosquitoes to prevent them harboring malarial parasites and also to render female mosquitoes to infertile the two for, uh, uh, for the one, one of the ways by which one can eradicate the malaria so creating an artificial mosquito basically they cannot take up the uh, take up this malaria parasite and then correcting mutations causing cystic fibrosis internal stem cell derived from patient and then combination of IPS and these technology potentially enable creation of human organs in chimeric peaks with the possibility of having an unlimited supply of organs for human at the same time recently um, US government has, has allowed the clinical trials of uh, CRISPR Cas9 mediated T cell to attack a cancer cells. So, in this particular procedure, the, they, they remove the T cells, they are planning to remove the T cells from the patient with the cancer and then edit the gene of a protein engineered to detect the cancer cells and instruct T cells to target them. And this is the DNYSO1 and then edited natural T cell protein that interfering with the cancer cell detection and then infusion of edited T cells back to the patient and then they are uh, in fact in some other studies by Chinese group have shown that these cells able to eradicate all the cancer cells in human and then finally even the disease causing mutations in humans can be created in a primate models of uh, 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 models in monkeys in fact monkeys are imbued with the targeted mutation of the PPR and then uh, REC gene and then they have generated uh, especially these kind of mutations are very much important to understand the neuropsychiatric disease of monkey models which are more related to human. So, so thank you for your attention.